Hello students, welcome to EPG Passion. I am Dr. Sumolai Roy from the Department of Physics and Astrophysics of University of Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module DSC and DTA under the paper Characterization of Nanomaterials 1 or in short COM1. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. What are DSC and DTA? Principles of DSC and DTA. We will learn about different types of DSC and DTA and instruments related to DSC and DTA with block diagrams. We will also learn analysis of the experimental outcomes from the DSC and DTA. And lastly, we will learn applications for DSC and DTA. Now, DSC. DSC stands for Differential Scanning Calorimetry. DSC is one of the thermoanalytical techniques. In case of DSC, difference in heat flow between sample and the reference is measured as a function of time or temperature while the sample is continuously heated under control conditions. These measurements give qualitative and quantitative information about physical and chemical changes which involves exothermic and endothermic process or changes in heat capacity of the sample. Principle Principle of DSC When a sample undergoes a physical transformation such as a phase transition, more or less heat will need to flow to it then to the reference. Typically, an empty sam sample pan to maintain both at the same temperature. By observing the differences difference in heat flow between the sample and reference, DSC is able to measure the amount of heat absorbs or released during the transition. Types of DSC. Various types of DSC. There are four different types of DSC instruments. The first one is power compensated DSC. In case of power compensated DSC, both reference and sample are heated separately under different furnace. Difference of temperature between reference and sample is maintained at zero, that is both are at the same temperature and the difference of energy between reference and sample is recorded as a function of sample temperature. Two independent heating unit are employed for power compensation DSC. To rapidly heat, cool or maintain equilibrium, small heating unit is required. The heating unit needs to be integrated with a relatively larger temperature controlled heat sink. For continuously monitoring the temperature of the material in reference and sample holders, Platinum resistance thermometers are used. The increasing the temperature, suitable power is applied to the reference and the sample heaters. This power required to maintain equal temperature of reference and sample, which is recorded by the power compensated DSC as a function of temperature. Power compensated DSC has lower sensitivities than the heat flux DSC. However, power compensated DSC are faster than their heat flux counterparts. Thus, power compensated DSC are often used in studying kinetics wherein very fast equilibrium to a desired temperature is reached. These instruments also have higher resolution than the heat flux DSC. The calibration constant in power compensated DSC which converts peak area into joules is an electrical conversion factor. Basic diagram of power compensated DSC. Here it is shown the sample in one left window and the reference in the right window and the horizontal lines under the sample and the references 
are designated by platinum resistance heaters and they are connected to a heat sink heat compensated dsc this is another type of dsc which is called heat compensated dsc here both the reference and sample are heated under the same furnace the difference between the temperatures of the reference and sample is recorded and converted into a power difference and plotted against time or temperature. The main cell assembly of DSC is enclosed within a heated silver block cylinder from which heat is transmitted onto the specimen by a constant disk connected to the cylinder. The reference and sample pan are kept on two raised platforms in the system. The underside of both the platforms is connected to a constant disk via connecting wires and chromal. Chromal is an alloy of nickel and chromium. There are two chromal disks, so thereby forming a thermocouple which is used to measure the temperatures of the two platforms. In addition to this, the individual temperature of the two platforms can be measured by the junction of tunnel wires linking the platforms to the chromal disks. Another separate thermocouple is integrated with the silver block which acts as a temperature controller for programmed heating cycles. Inert gas can be introduced within the cell at a constant flow rate of the order of 40 nanometer per minute. Unlike the power compensated DSC, the calibration constant which converts peak area into joule in heat flux DSC is a thermal factor. Now in heat flux DSC, the total heat flow DHDT is DHDT equals to CPDT, CPD capital D to DT, where T is a small d, as a function of capital plus function of capital T and small d, where H is, H is enthalpy in joule per mole. Function of capital T and small d is kinetic response of the specimen in joule per mole. And Cp is the specific heat capacity in joule per kelvin per mole. So therefore, the total heat flow is equal to the sum of the two terms where one term is related to the kinetic response and the other is related to the heat capacity. Now here we show a diagram which shows the basic instrumentation of heat compensated DSC. You can see there in this case the reference pan and the sample pan are in the same chamber. The left one is the reference pan and the right one is the sample pan. So we have a barge gas inlet here and we have thermoelectric disc and the chromal disc. Thermoelectric disc as mentioned in the text this is made of constantan and also we can see there is a chromal disc here. Also we see that this chromal ware connected and we have a thermocouple junction at the end point of the reference pan and the sample pan. So here we discuss the third kind of DSC which is modulated DSC. In case of modulated DSC, the cell and heating arrangement are analogous to those used in heat flux DSC. This is a relatively recent technique and was proposed in 1993. A separation of overlapping events in the DSC scans is the main advantage of this technique. In modulated DSC, a linear heating ramp usually is overlapped with a sinusoidal function described by a amplitude and frequency to create a sine wave shift temperature which varies with time. 
Fourier transformation can be used to break the DSC signal into two parts, reversible and reflecting events as T equals to T0 equals to B into small t plus capital B sine omega t into dq dt equals to C some constant into B plus capital B omega cross omega t plus function of small t and capital T plus k sine omega t. Here capital T represents the temperature, small t is time, capital C is specific heat, function of small t and capital T is the average underlying kinetic function obtained by subtracting the effect of sine wave modulation and omega is frequency. Small b plus capital B into omega cos omega t, the, this whole term is the calculated quantity where dt dt or curve reversing. Capital K is kinetic response amplitude of sine wave modulation. Modulated DSC technique is a valued extension of conventional DSC. Applications of this DSC includes study of the energy of relaxation and precise determination of hyper DSC. The high resolution of PC DSC or new type of power compensation DSC provides the best result for an analysis of melting and crystallization of metals or detection of glass transition temperature Tg in medications. Pascans DSC has ability to perform valid heat flow measurements with fast linear control rates up to 500 Kelvin per minute, especially by cooling where the rates are higher than with the classical PC DSC. Pressure DSC In pressure DSC, the sample can be submitted to different pressures which allows the characterization of substances at pressures of processes or to distinguish between overlapping peaks. Pressure, pressure DSC. In pressure DSC, the sample can be submitted to different pressures which allows the characterization of substances at the pressures of processes or to distinguish between overlapping peaks. Application of this technique includes studies of pressure, studies of pressure sensitive reactions evaluation of catalysis and resolution of overlapping transitions. Instrumentation of DSC. First is the detector. In case of detector, thermocouple is used to measure the temperature range, temperature change while the sample heated under controlled environment. For the case of low temperature, copper constantin or chromel alumel thermocouple is used and for the case of Corrosive atmosphere or high temperature, platinum 13% rheostat thermocouple is used. Sample container. Sample container is designed in such a way that it can be used under high pressure and thermal environment. Number three, reference materials. Generally, reference material is made of calcined alumina which is L23 or carborundum, silicon carbonate or silicon carbonate. Fourth one is temperature controller. Temperature controller provides the thermal power to heater to maintain the temperature of the sample and reference at the programmable value. And fifth is furnace. One block of furnace is required in case of heat compensated DSC and two block of furnace is required in case of power compensated DSC. DSC curve can be used to calculate the enthalpy of transition by integrating the peak area for given transition. The transition enthalpy is found as follows. Delta H equals to K times A, where K is the calorimetric constant and A is the 
area under the peak and delta h is the enthalpy of transition the area of peak scales directly with the heat absorbed that is endothermic or heat evolved which is exothermic during a reaction and the peak side varies directly with the reaction rate transitions involve glass transition temperature melting temperature crystallization temperature dsc curve also used to calculate the specific heat capacity of material using equation specific heat capacity cp equals to absolute value of heat flow by heating rate where absolute value of heat flow equals to heat supplied per unit time and heating rate is the temperature increase per unit time therefore cp equals to q by t into delta t by small t so cp equal to q by delta t factors affecting dsc curve instrumental factors furnace heating rate furnace atmosphere recording speed geometry of sample holders location of sensors sensitivity of the recording system and material of the sample container sample characteristics are the following weight of the sample nature of sample solubility of evolved gases in the sample particle size heat of reaction and thermal conductivity applications of dsc dsc can be used in studying heat of melting crystallization percentage of crystalline energy heat capacities thermal stabilities purities oxidative stabilities food science drug analysis and liquid crystals dta in case of dta sample and reference material is heated at the same rate under the control conditions and the temperature difference between the sample and the reference material is continuously recorded as a function of time this differential temperature is plotted against temperature or time and called dta curve or thermogram if there is zero temperature difference between sample and the reference material then sample does not undergo any chemical or physical change and if there is a temperature difference between the sample and the reference material then physical or chemical changes takes place in a, in the sample these changes results in heat being absorbed which is endothermic process or evolved which is exothermic process endothermic changes includes vaporization phase changes such as melting sublimation transition between two different crystal structures decomposition and so on whereas exothermic changes includes crystallization chemisorption oxidation reduction and so on thus any change in state can be detected by convention endothermic response is represented by downward peaks whereas the exothermic response is shown by upward peaks dta curve can be used as a fingerprint for identification purposes for example in the study of clays where the structural similarity of different forms renders different diffraction experiments difficult to interpret area under dta peaks gives enthalpy change of the sample dta and tga are complementary techniques types of dta dta stands for differential thermal analysis on the basis of temperature sensing system dta are of two types number 1 heat flux dta and number 2 classic dta in case of heat flux dta thermocouple is placed outside the sample and reference material and its classic dta thermocouple is immersed into the sample and reference material in case of dta the sample holder 
is the following sample and the reference crucible are generally metallic they are either aluminium platinum or ceramic silica and may or may not have a lid for good results area of contacts that is breadth by width sample and crucible is maximized 2 furnace reference and the sample should be matched thermally and arranged symmetrically with the furnace so that both of them are cooled or heated in an identical manner metal block around the wall acts as a heat sink and by using internal heater temperature of the heat sink is slowly increased sink in turn heat the sample and the reference material 3 sensors and recording system pair of mesh thermocouple is used one pair is in contact with the sample and the other pair is in contact with the reference output of the differential thermometer ts minus tr is amplified and sent to the data acquisition system dta experimental factors here should be taken while selecting the experimental factor for example powder decomposition reaction is affected by the specimen environment size surface to the volume ratio and composition although solid state phase changes may not be impacted by these variables usually the experiments involve analysis powder samples so that sample results do not represent the bulk samples very strained energy could builds up to control transfer transformations another factor influencing the decomposition reaction is the packaging of the powders which leads to the large difference in simulation samples some samples may evolve large amount of heat and may cause saturation of the response capability of measurement system to avoid this situation the sample can be diluted with inert materials to measure temperature of phase transformation the maximum temperature should be varied with the sample size the weight of the sample and the rate of heating do not affect the shape of the peaks in dt the effect of reducing heating rate is similar to the effect of decreasing the weight of the sample and both results in sharper peaks with enhanced resolution however this advantage is only in the case when signal to ratio is not compromised studies involving examination of decomposition reaction can benefit from the effects of heating rate on the shape of peak as well as the deposition nonetheless kinetic studies require minimization of thermal gradients which can be achieved by decreasing either sample size or heating rate interpretation of presentation of data the peak area a which is related to the enthalpy changes in the test sample is that enclosed between the peak and the interpolated baseline it can be shown that a is given by a equals to mq by gk where a is the sample mass q is the enthalpy change per unit mass g is the measured shape factor and k is the thermal conductivity of sample it is possible to measure the heat capacity cp at constant pressure using dta cp equals to capital k into t2 minus t1 by m into h where t1 and t2 are the differential temperatures generated when the apparatus is first run without any sample at all and then with the test sample in position h is the heating rate and the constant k is determined by calibration of the standard substances dta thermogram it is a plot of temperature differences versus temperature as shown in the figure four transition transition detected by dtf uh, as follows second order transition in which change in horizontal line is detected for example glass a narrow endothermic curve due to the melting process broad endothermic curve due to the exothermic process and exothermic curve due to the crystalline phase change factors affecting dta curves one instrumental parameters it includes furnace atmosphere size and shape of furnace sample holder materials sample holder geometry heating rate and location of thermocouple in sample chamber speed and response of recording device 
Number two, characteristic characteristics of sample. It includes particle size of sample, amount of sample, packing density, swelling or shrinkage characteristic of sample, degree of crystallinity, presence of diluents, thermal conductivity, and heat capacity. Quantitative aspects of DTA. Determination of the heat of transformation or reaction or the mass of the reactive components of the sample is made from the curve peak area, which is given by A equals to integration T1 to T2 delta capital T into DT, which is equal to M into delta H by G times K. Where A is the curve peak area, dH is the molar enthalpy change, capital M is the mass of the reactive component, capital K is the thermal conductivity of the sample, capital G is a constant related to the geometry of the sample. In practice, a simplified expression is used. A is the curve area, a curve peak area, K is the calibration process. Temperature dependence of calibration constant K. This means that the calorimetric sensitivity of the DT apparatus decreases with temperature. That is, more heat is required per unit area. The peak area can be converted into mass or enthalpy change only if the value of K at the transformation temperature is shown, is known. So, here it is plotted with differential temperature and we show the shaded area represents estimated peak area. Slide number 28 Application of DTA or differential thermal analysis. Number 1 Analysis of characteristic de decomposition patterns. Number 2 Studies of degradation mechanism and reaction kinetics. Number 3 Determination of organic content and inorganic content in a sample. Number 4 Study of materials, chemical analysis. And number 5 Any change which is associated with enthalpy change. So students, let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. So we have learnt principles of differential techniques used in nanoscale experiments. One is DSC, that is differential scanning term, uh, calorimetry, and DTA. So different types of DSC and DTA and their working techniques. Also we learnt instrumentations related to DTA and DSC in details. We learnt analysis of the experimental data obtained from DSC and DTA and their techniques. Thank you.